in this video we are going to discuss about double integration so these are the basic four points that we are going to quickly brush up first what is the geometrical representation of a double integration number two we will be solving a problem which will involve definite limits of the x and y variables number three we will solve another kind of problem where the limits of the variables won't be definite it will be as functions of other variables and number four, we'll do a problem which will involve the change of order of the integration. So let's quickly go into the geometrical representation. Suppose I have a function of x, y. Okay. And let me say, whenever I give some input of x and y, the output that I get, I'm storing it in the z variable. Okay. So imagine this is your z axis and the other two axes that means this axis is the y axis and this axis is the x axis so i have the x y and the z axis okay so the more so this is my x y plane you can understand this is my x y plane so the moment i take a fixed region in my x y plane lying in this plane i take all possible values okay from this region i take all possible values and I plug it into the function, okay, and that gives me some output of z each time I plug in some values of x and y. So I get an output which is going to look something maybe like this. So these are the various points. So the moment I put values of x and y, it is giving me points which are lying on this given surface if provided this surface represents the function of x y okay so the moment i put in values of x and y from the x and y uh, coordinate plane it gives me values which i'm storing it in the z function and i plot that z value along the z axis and i get this particular region so that means if i am doing this integration okay let's say here the x value is varying from a to b and the y value is varying from c to d okay so x is ranging from a to b and y is ranging from c to d then in that case x is varying from a to b y is varying from b to c sorry uh, i have c to d and i am taking the integration of this function which is f of x y and I am doing the integration with respect to dx and dy. Okay, so this entire integration is actually this particular surface area that we are trying to find out. Okay, so this is the basic difference between a single integral and a double integral. In a single integral, we are only finding this kind of an area. In double integral, we are taking points from a certain area putting it into the function, getting some value and finding the area of that particular surface. So this is the geometrical aspect of double integration. So now let's quickly go into a particular kind of problem where the x and y uh, limits are in definite form. That means they are not given as some other functions of y is not a function of x or x is not a function of y. They are just simple definite limits. So these kind of problems are the most easiest one and let's see how we can solve this. So as you can see first I have the limit of y so I am going to try to integrate the first integration where I will treat y as a variable and x as a constant and do the first integration. Now remember we are only allowed to do the integration in this manner if the x and the y limit don't depend on each other. Okay, you can see these are completely separate definite limits. Okay, if somehow the limit of y was a function of x, then you cannot do the integration in the process that I'm going to do right now. Okay, so first of all, I'll be doing this integration where I will be treating x as completely a constant. Okay, so I'm keeping the integration x equal to 0 to pi by 2 and this integration I'm going to treat it as integration of sine y simply with respect to y so that would be minus of cos x plus y and I will have the limit y equal to 0 to pi 
dx. So if I just put the upper limits and the lower limits, I'll bring out the minus sign outside. So I will have cos x plus pi minus cos of x dx. Okay. And for the proceeding with the calculation, cos of 180 plus x that means it will be minus of cos x so minus cos x and simply another minus cos x so it becomes minus 2 times cos x dx the 2 minus sign they are going to get absorbed and it's going to become x equal to 0 to pi by 2 2 going outside the integration cos x dx so if i further do this integration I will have sine x where the limit of x is ranging from 0 to pi by 2. Now again if I put the upper limit sine 90 is 1 and sine 0 is 0. So that gives me the answer as 2 square units. Okay. So this is the simple integration. Now moving on to the integration where the limits of x and y will be as some functions of the other variables. Okay, so let's quickly look at this problem. Here my function of x, y is x square plus y square. And I have to figure out the limits of x and y based on these informations given to me. So the region is bounded by these curves. So first let's try to draw these curves. Now we know x into y equals to 1, that's a rectangular hyperbola and a rectangular hyperbola looks something like this, right? So I will just extend my x-axis on this side and my y-axis on this side. Now I have y equals to 0, y equals to 0 is nothing but the x-axis itself. So this is the y equal to 0 line. Then I have y equals to x. Now y equals to x, we know that's a line passing through origin making 45 degree angle with the x axis. So that's my y equals to x line. And finally I have x equals to 2. So x equals to 2 is going to look something like this, a vertical line which is passing through the point 2 comma 0. Okay, so we need to find the region bounded by these curves okay so the region you can understand the region is this part right so that's the region bounded by x y equals to 1 the rectangular hyperbola y equals to x the straight line and x equals to 2 another vertical line okay so this is the region and we need to integrate this function based on this region Okay, so now here we have to break the region into two parts. Why is that so? Because you can see the yellow portion that I have marked that is connected with some part of the straight line and some part of the hyperbola. So it's connected with two different curves. So I have to break it up in such a way that my two uh, regions, one of them will be connected only with the straight line and one of them will be connected only with the hyperbola part. So I will just shade in this manner. I will draw a vertical line like this and let's say I will call this yellow region as the R1 region and I'll take another color and I would say this green region is the R2 region. Okay, so I've broken it up into two parts. The yellow part is connected with the y goes to x line and the x axis. The green region is connected with the x y equals to 1 rectangular hyperbola and the y axis and also cut off by the x equals to 2 vertical line. Okay, So I need to do the integration in two parts, one for the r1 region and one for the r2 region. So let's try to do this integration. First of all, I am trying to do it for the r1 region. For the r1 region, now I need to take or I need to first of all decide whether I want to do the integration with respect to x first or with respect to y. Suppose I want to do the integration with respect to x. The first integration I want to do is with respect to x later on with respect to y. So in that case I will be taking a 
horizontal strip okay so i'm taking a horizontal strip i hope you can see the small horizontal strip that i've taken so whenever i take a horizontal strip i'm going to consider the width the width of this strip is dx okay the small width is dx and i am moving the strip from the lowest point of the yellow region to the highest point of the yellow region okay so now what is the highest point that means this point what is the coordinate of that point so i need to know what is this particular point okay so you can see this point is nothing but the intersection of the y equals to x line and the xy equals to one uh, curve okay so the intersection of these two things so i'm going to solve those two things and try to find out the intersection point so i'll do that over here if i take xy equals to one and y equals to x and if i try to solve these two then let's see what i'm going to get uh, i'll just substitute the value of y in the first equation so i'll have x into x equals to one that means x square equals to one so that would give me x equals to plus minus one now since i'm working in the first quadrant so i'm obviously interested with the x equals to plus one point so that means i can understand the x coordinate of this point is positive one okay now if i plug in the value of one in the second equation or any one you want if i plug in the value of x i get the value of y also to be one so that means the coordinate of the intersection of y equals to x and xy equals to one is the point one comma one all right so that means at this point the value of x is one okay so now i'm going to try to write the limits of the integration okay so observe this very carefully i have taken a horizontal strip that means the first integration which i want to do is with respect to x so my first integration i want to do i'll write the function as it is the function is x square plus y square and i want to do the integration first with respect to x and then later on i want to do the integration with respect to y remember the the inside integration which you are taking if that is depending on x that means you are taking a horizontal strip if you were taking a vertical strip then the inside integration would depend on y and the outside one would depend on x okay now this x which you have taken the inside integration that has to be a function of y not a definite integral a function of y kind of a thing okay not definite values what i want to mean and the y values okay the integration which is outside the y values has to be a definite value okay from definite some point to definite some point what will be the value of y that will be how much lower can you take the horizontal strip down and how much higher can you bring it up okay in the yellow region the lowest i can take down this red strip that i've drawn here the lowest i can take down is by making it touch with the y equals to zero line so the minimum i can bring it down to is y equals to zero and the maximum i can take it up is right at this point and at this point you know the value of y is how much from the y coordinate value i have the value of y is one so max minimum zero to maximum one so i can fluctuate or move this horizontal strip to from minimum y equal to zero to maximum y equals to one okay now coming to the limit of x okay so how to understand the limit of x look from where always look from the left hand side to the right hand side okay remember from left hand side to right hand side now what is the leftmost point which is in contact with the red strip that i have drawn okay the small strip that i have taken what is the leftmost point and with which curve is it connected it is connected with y equals to x line okay the leftmost point that is connected with the y equals to x line so the value of x is starting from y okay because the value of x is how much the value of x is y so starting from x equals to y and now look at the rightmost extreme point where the strip is ending okay the rightmost point where the strip is ending so the strip is ending on this yellow line that i have drawn right you can see i have drawn the yellow line over here on which the strip is ending okay the strip is ending on this yellow line and this yellow line is passing through the point the value of x is 1 where the line is passing 
So obviously you can understand the equation of this line is x equals to 1, right? So the red strip that I've drawn, the extreme rightmost point of the uh, strip is given by x equals to 1. So the upper limit is becoming x equals to 1. So that's how we understand the limit of x and the limit of y. So you can see the limit of x is now a function of y, not a definite particular value. Okay. So this is how we find out the integration for the region, yellow colored region only, which is the R1 region. So similarly, I need to do the same job for the green part. Okay. So plus, now again, I'll come to the green part. For the green part, I'll be taking again a horizontal strip. Okay. Again, a horizontal strip. Let's do a thing. Let's not do a horizontal strip right now. Because now if I take a horizontal strip again, I have to break it up into two parts. Why two parts? Because see in the upper region, this red strip on the left hand side is connected with the vertical line on the right hand side connected with the hyperbola. But if I go a little bit more down, then you can see if I draw the same strip, then now again it is connected on the left hand side with the vertical line. That's fine. But on the right hand side, now it's not connected with the hyperbola. It's connected with the vertical line x equals to 2. So the curve is changing. So then again, I have to break it up into two parts and I don't want to do that. Okay. So I want to simplify my calculation. So instead of taking a horizontal strip, now let me take a vertical strip because that is more convenient right now in this problem. Okay. Remember choosing the kind of strip is completely in your hand as per the convenience. Okay. So now, since I'm taking a vertical strip, so you understand the first integration that I will do, that will be with respect to y and the outside integration that will be with respect to x. The function remains as it is. So I will complete my first integration with respect to y, then do the integration with respect to x. Okay, so that's how we are going to write it. Now, just like before, the limit of x will be now definite fixed values, the outside integration. So let's see how is the value of x changing if I move the, so my, this is my vertical strip right now. I can move my vertical strip along the x axis. The minimum I can bring it is when I align it with the x equals to y line. Okay, so I can bring my uh, strip, vertical strip, mini maximum on the left hand side when the value of x is how much? 1. So the minimum value is x equals to 1 and my vertical strip I can maximum push it to this particular point where the value of x is how much? 2. So from x equals to 1 to x equals to 2. Now again when I am uh, trying to find out the limit of y, always remember you will take the lower limit to the upper limit. Okay, lower to upper. So look at the lowest point of the strip. What is it connected with? Okay, the lowest point of the strip that is connected with the line y equal to 0, which is the x-axis. So starting from y equal to 0 and the uppermost point of that strip, it is connected with which particular curve? It is connected with the curve xy equals to 1. So the uppermost point, it is connected with xy equals to 1. From here, you get the value of y as 1 by x, right? So we get the value as 1 by x. So my upper limit becomes 1 by x. So you can see that now the limit of y is expressed as a function of x and my limit of x that's a definite fixed value limit. Okay. So now simply we are going to these, do these two integrations, add up the answers and that was give us the final answer. So let's quickly go into the calculation part of this. Okay, I'll just bring down a little bit. So now let's take a look into the calculation of this part. So in the inside part of this, we are going to treat the integration as uh, this entire function as a function of x and we are going to treat y as constant. Okay, because the integration is happening with respect to x. So the outside limit remains as it is, which is y equal to uh, 0 to 1. And in the inside limit, I'm going to do the integration with uh, respect to x. So that would be the integration of x square would be x cubed by 3 integration of y square where y is treated as constant, it would be x y square. And I have to put the limits of x from x equals to y to 1. 
so that will be my first integration plus now going on to the next one in the next one i have x equals to 1 to 2 and in the inside integration i am going to do the integration with respect to which variable y and treat x as constant okay so integration of x square with respect to y that would be x square y integration of y cube with respect to y that would be y cube by 3 and the limits of y is 0 to 1 by x okay so y equals to 0 to 1 by x and whatever i get i need to do the integration again with respect to x so let's proceed with this calculation So if I put the limits of x, I'll be having y cube by 3 plus, uh, sorry, I need to put the upper limit first. If I put the upper limit, which is 1, uh, in place of x, I'll be having 1 by 3 plus y square. That's the upper limit, okay, minus, now the lower limit, uh, if I put y in place of x, uh, that would be y cube by 3 plus y cube, right, that's the lower limit plus going on to the next integration so here i need to put the values of y first the upper limit if i put 1 by x in place of y i would simply get x from the first part and plus 1 by 3x cube so that's the upper limit minus the lower limit that would be now if i put a 0 in place of y you can understand for both the cases it would turn out to be 0 problem where the limit is dependent in terms of other variables and you need to find out the limits from the figure okay so now let's quickly go into the next problem so now in this problem you can see that if i try to do the first integration in terms of x with respect to x the major problem that i'm facing is that I have a x squared term here and I have another x inside. That means I have to use the product rule for integration if I try to do the integration with respect to x. So that's a lot of hard work to do and that's something we would like to avoid if possible. Okay. So whenever this kind of a scenario arises where the initial integration that you need to do that's becoming either very complicated or it's becoming big okay and maybe it is possible to avoid that how is it possible now imagine if this first integration was with respect to y and the second one which is outside if that was with respect to x then what would have happened so the first one was with respect to y you can see you have only one y term here and you could very easily integrate it treating x as a constant so it will be much easier to deal with so this kind of a problem goes under the category of change of order of integration okay so the requirement for change of order is only to make the computation process much more easy okay so now how to change the order of the integration let's quickly go into that so let's try to draw the figure which is given by these four curves x equals to y x equals to 1, y equals to 0, and y equals to 1, right? y equals to 0 to 1, x equals to y to 1. So as you can see, initially we have x as a function of y. Okay, now what is the curve x equals to y? It's simply a straight line passing through origin, making 45 degree with the x-axis. So that's my x equals to y line. Okay. 
so since first we have the integration with respect to x that means from like just like the previous problem if you think one step back from the question to the diagram okay not from the diagram to the question you're actually going uh, from the solution towards the question okay so you have the question here and you know you are doing this in inside integration with respect to x first that means you must have taken a horizontal strip and not a vertical one so that means your horizontal strip has been starting okay if i make it with a different color your horizontal strip has been starting from the y equals to x line okay that's the leftmost point from where it is starting and where is it ending it is ending on the line x equals to 1 okay so that means you have x equals to 1 somewhere over here where the horizontal strip is ending on the right hand side so this you understand by looking at the limit of the inside integration now come to the in integration which is outside the limit of y is 0 to 1 that means you are moving this horizontal strip lowest down to y equals to 0 that means lowest down to the y axis and maximum up to the point y equals to 1 that means maximum up to this point so you are varying it from the x axis to maximum x equals uh, to maximum point y equals to 1 okay and your strip has been taken in a horizontal manner now changing the order of the integration means first you want to do the integration with respect to y that means you want to take a, a vertical strip now okay so now you want to take a vertical strip instead of taking the horizontal one so that is the change of order that we want to do okay so now let's try to reverse the order of the integration so first i want to do my integration with respect to y okay and my function remains as it is no problem with the function so i want to write dy first and then later on dx and i need to figure out what will be the limits of x and y so since I'm taking a vertical strip now because I'm changing the order so my vertical strip is connected with the lowermost point which is given by y equals to 0 so the lowermost point is starting from y equal to 0 and maximum it is going up to this point which is given by the equation y equals to x so the value of y is starting from 0 and going up till x okay and I can move this vertical strip minimum to the left hand side to the origin point and maximum to this point which is actually the value 1 right which is which was given by the line uh, x equals to 1 right this was x equals to 1 line so I can bring my vertical strip maximum on the left hand side to the value 0 and minimum uh, on the left hand side to the value 0 and maximum to the right hand side to the value 1 so my values are ranging from x equal to 0 to 1 right so now you can see this integration is same as this integration just the order of the integration has been swapped okay and the benefit we'll draw from this is that we will be able to very easily calculate the first limit over here which we were not able to do in the original question okay now see what easy it will happen since inside in the inside integration we are treating the integration with respect to y and x is being considered as a constant so this x square is simply a constant which i can take it outside the integration outside the first integration okay so x equals to 0 to 1 the x square i can simply bring it outside no problem with that and then y integration y equal to 0 to x i have sine xy dy and then later on dx now this integration is simply a function of sine function so simply we are going to do the integration of sine y over here with respect to y and x will be treated as constant so that integration would become integration of sine is minus of cos xy now remember your x is a constant so don't forget to divide by x right because sine mx integration is minus cos mx by m so you need to keep the m and y is varying from 0 to x dx so here x is nothing but a constant so you can easily cancel out 1x okay and if i put the values 
of the limits, then I'll have, so I'm taking the minus sign outside, so that's gone outside. So in place of uh, y, I'll put x, which is the upper limit. So I'll have cos of x square, okay, minus, now I put the lower limit, <coughs> sorry, which would be cos of zero, and I'll directly write the cos zero value, which is one. Okay, so cos of zero, that becomes one. So if I further pursue this integration, it's minus x equal to zero to one, x cos of x square dx minus so this minus and this minus it will become plus so plus integration x equals to 0 to 1 dx so the second integration is very simple the first one you need some preliminary substitution to do it what substitution can we take we can take the substitution x square equal to z right a very simple substitution so if you differentiate both sides you're going to get 2x dx equals to dz, right? And since I have x dx on this side, so I'll take that 2 that way on the right hand side. So x dx would be dz by 2. So if I plug in this value in this integration, I need to change the, uh, you know, the limits also with respect to the substitution. I'm coming to that later. So x dx would be simply dz by 2 and cos x square, x square would be z square. So I'll have sorry x square will be z so i'll have cos of z okay and i'll change the limit right now so when the value of x is zero okay when x value is zero what's the value of z z value is also zero so z is starting from zero now see again when x value is one over here what's the value of z z is again one so from zero to one so the limit does not change and this would be simply x zero to one so again, if I do the integration, so I bring the minus, uh, bring the half. We could very easily calculate because we had changed the order and the integrations became easy. And without the change of order, still this problem could have been done, but it would have been much more elaborate and much more complicated. I hope this video will be helpful to all of you out there. Okay. Thank you and see you in the next video.